Today we're going to make a table out of plywood. This video is sponsored by Trade Coffee and I'll tell you a little bit more about them later in the video. No computers were used in the design or fabrication of this project. Instead, I sketched everything by hand and then cut out all the pieces with a jigsaw. I'm making the table out of radiata pine plywood that I bought from Home Depot for about $24 a sheet. The design process is actually quite simple. I just have to come up with the profile for one of the top pieces and the bottom pieces, and then I can use those pieces as templates to draw the pieces in between. I don't want the facets to be straight. Instead, I'm going for a sort of scalloped curve. And to draw these lines, I cut a thin piece of plywood, screwed in some finished screws, and then traced along the bend in the plywood. With one of the top pieces now designed, I turn my focus to one of the bottom pieces, and I have to consider two things when designing it. I want a broad perimeter to provide a stable base, but I also need to ensure that there's enough room for knees under the table. And so the points of the facets are pretty similar between the top and bottom, but the bottom pieces are more sculpted and cut out to create leg room. In previous projects with a similar aesthetic, I used a CNC machine to batch out all the pieces. But this time I'm traveling and building this in Andrew Schultz's new studio. So I'm just going to use an inexpensive Ryobi jigsaw. Andrew Schultz is one of my favorite comedians and a good friend. And Mike from Modern Builds and myself have been building out all the furniture for his new studio where he's going to be doing stand-up shows and recording his podcasts. I then drilled some holes on the inside and cut out the piece that's going to be the one that sits right on the floor. I then placed the bottom piece on a new sheet of plywood and traced its outline. From here, I'm just going to draw about a half an inch inside this outline to design the piece that's going to go directly on top of the bottom piece. And don't worry, we're not throwing out all these scrap pieces. We're actually going to use these to make side tables and other storage devices, also using this stacked method. In order to conserve material and reduce weight, we want to make as many of the pieces hollow as we can. Right now I'm cutting out the third piece from the top and this will be another hollow piece and we'll use the inside as another layer on the bottom of the table. I want the table top to be two layers thick so there isn't any flex to it. So for the top two pieces, I'll just leave them solid and not cut out a middle piece. The table has an hourglass profile and for the middle pieces, I can get two layers out of a single sheet of four by eight plywood. All right, all the pieces are cut, time to start assembling. We don't want screws showing on the top surface of the table, so we're going to assemble it upside down. So we placed the top piece, spread out some wood glue, and then added the next piece. This pine plywood isn't furniture grade, so it can be a little bit warped. So I'm using 99 cent squeezy clamps from Home Depot to force the layers together. I added the third piece, which is our first hollow layer, applied some glue, and screwed it down using two inch long screws. I then just kept adding one layer at a time, gluing and screwing them down. After about six hollow layers, we started getting to the smaller solid layers. A lot of these middle pieces are cut exactly the same. And if I was to do this again, I probably would have created a little bit more dramatic of an hourglass figure. But I was worried that if the profiles got too thin, I would lose some stability and the whole table would start to lean to one side or the other. Spreading the glue is the single most time-consuming part of this build, and I like to use a wide putty knife to do it because... Hey, what's up? It's your man Montel Jordan with a special shout-out to Homemade Modern, because this is how we glue it. Thanks, Montel. Now, this certainly is a time-consuming way to build a table, but it only took about two to four minutes to do each layer, and my friend Cooper came over to visit, so he kept me company. But before we go any farther in this build, let me tell you a little bit about the sponsor for this video, Trade Coffee. I've been using Trade for a while and I'm a really big fan and here's why. Out here in Joshua Tree, there aren't a lot of coffee shop options, but it's no problem because Trade works with the nation's top roasters and then matches my particular tastes in coffee with the best possible fits. They then deliver these excellent selections right to my door, which is great because it reduces the amount of times I have to go to the grocery store. Now the reason they know what kind of coffee I like is because I filled out this quiz. This lets Trade know exactly how you like your coffee, and then they can curate a match exactly for you. 
the coffee then gets delivered to you and you can rate your matches so trade can continue to delight you with coffees that you'll love. Or you can just repeat with the ones that you want to keep getting more of. I drink coffee every single day and trade is an excellent way to provide a little bit of variety but still maintaining a consistent quality level. So click on the link in the description box below and the first 100 viewers who click that link will get 30% off their first bag when they sign up with free shipping included. All right, back to the build. And more importantly, back to hanging with Cooper. This was a traveling project, so I didn't have any large clamps with me. But if I was to do this in my workshop, I'd probably use large bar clamps to really force big sections of the table together, get really nice tight laminations, and then use long lag screws to screw those sections to each other. This would also allow the table to be taken apart in two to three sections, which would make it easier to move. As I started getting to the bottom of the table, the pieces start flaring out. So once again, I used the 99 cent squeeze clamps to make sure there was no gaps around the edges. When working around these edges, I drove my screws in at an angle. I don't want to go straight down because I don't want to risk chipping the blade on my angle grinder when I do the power carving. For previous projects, I used flat discs on my angle grinder to smooth out the contours between the layers of plywood. But my friend Ben Paig suggested using one of these Holy Galahad discs that I got off of Amazon, and it saved me a ton of flat discs. It basically looks like a metal sea urchin and is really aggressive without chipping out the plywood, which was what I was worried about. This tool was a total lifesaver. I was working against the clock since I had a flight to catch and only four days to build this thing. And using flat disc would have probably taken twice as long. Now it is pretty aggressive, so you'll see a little bit of waviness, which I actually kind of like. It gave it sort of this organic, carved out, sandstone canyon kind of feel. Now if you wanted to get rid of that texture, an intermediary step of using flat discs after using the Holy Galahad would smooth it out a little bit more. My buddy Jacob stopped by to help out with some sanding and we just used an orbital sander starting with 60 grit papers to kind of smooth the contours a little bit more before moving up to 120 grit, 150 grit, and finish sanding with 220. The table weighs about 240 pounds so it took the two of us to flip it over and we were extra careful not to chip or break the pointy tips. And since now I finally had access to those top layers, I could shape those with the angle grinder as well. Alright, last little bit of finished sanding with 220 grit. And then we sealed the whole thing with Verithane water-based polyurethane in crystal clear matte. The table is super sturdy, very stable, and there's plenty of leg room underneath it. The carved stone walls of Antelope Canyon were the inspiration for this table and I definitely think we captured a bit of that essence. I really like the table and I like that I was able to make it with just a few basic power tools, but to be perfectly honest it didn't exactly come out the way that I wanted it to. It has a little bit too much of a tree stump aesthetic and I think if I was to do it again I would make it a little bit more asymmetrical and how it hourglasses from top to bottom. So as I said before, this is one project in a series that we're doing for Andrew Schultz. Be sure to check out his comedy. I'll put a link to it in the description box below. And check out some of the other projects that Mike and I did, like this sofa or the coffee table and concrete console that are on the Modern Builds channel. I haven't been back to New York in a minute, but Andrew and crew tell me that the table is holding up nicely and even sent me a few clips. Never can be too safe out here during this quarantine. Ugh. It's a beautiful table we got right here. Mm. Don't believe anything Ben tells you. This thing is made out of solid redwood, okay? We yanked a redwood out of a redwood forest out in uh, Oakland or something. I'm not sure, uh, somewhere around there. And um, we drove it here on the back of an 18-wheeler and then Ben shaved it down right outside there on the uh, on our porch. I want to show him our porch. A lot of dust. A lot of dust. That's why we have these. And uh, yeah, he didn't finish painting it. He said we could paint it ourselves, so he left us um, some sharpies. 
shout out to Trade for sponsoring this video and try to be one of those first 100 vid and try to be one of those first 100 viewers who clicks on the link in the description box below and gets 30% off their first bag when they sign up for Trade Coffee. Oh, and free shipping is included. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and uh bye. Oh, this is a uh, prom cedar right here. You still see the, the sap coming out of it.